As I walked out one May morning. Good afternoon, welcome to Deep Rooted. This is Sean, I'm Ben, we're from the Copper family. We are in Rottingdean, uh, the home, the hub of the family. Um, has been for at least 400 years. Um, what we thought we'd do today is show you a little bit, a few of the sites of Rottingdean, have a bit of a walk around, show you what an amazing place it is, a few of the key sort of sites for the family, and enjoy what's an amazing September afternoon. We're here on the south coast of England, about sort of five miles east of Brighton. Um, we enjoy the sunshine and show you the sites. It's particularly hot today, actually. <laughs> for England, it is. Yeah. yeah. There's, look, there's an ice cream there. Friday afternoon, we've just finished work um, and we've hit the Rottingdean rush hour. We're on our way up, up the side of uh, the main road, such as it is, to go to Challenger's Cottages, uh, where the family lived at the early part of the 20th century. Which was his full intent? He took a by her white hand, which was his full intent. So as you can see, the Rottingdean Preservation Society put up a, a plaque to the family, um, and it conveniently gives the date, so we don't have to remember exactly when we were here and when we weren't. Um, but it's a really nice touch, just to show, you know, that the family are well remembered locally. Um, and yeah, today I think if we can, we'll pick up a few of those key places. Uh, I think next we're going to head down to the church. Um, and where we were sat earlier actually was super cool as well. That little the kind of wooden shacky thing we were sat in, that used to be our great granddad's workshop when he was a state carpenter. Um, so there's little mementos, because the family have been here so long, there's little bits dotted all the way through the village here, which are really important to the family. Um, so yeah, follow us back down that way and we're going to head back down towards the church and the pond see the windmill up there on the hill. Beautiful thing. It's not working now though, but it will always be there, hopefully. Yeah, we're in a, a road called Dean Court Road. We're going to show you some lovely old buildings. So some of these buildings are properly old, uh, maybe two, three hundred years old, but they're cool, they're flint, they're oak. What's wrong with that? Nothing. So we're sort of saying two or three hundred years old. It's all much of a muchness when, you, when you've been in the same place for a long time. Follow me over here and I'll show you how old these things really are. There's a bit of a clue on the beam above the door. Right here. Take you to my father's house. As long as we have. So we're going to head to St Margaret's Church, which is just behind this hedge and this wall here. Let's come back down Dean Court Road. Sean's just looking at Kipling Cottage over there. So there's some far more illustrious people who've lived in Rottingdean than, than us lowly coppers. One of them, if you're into English literature, Rudyard Kipling, uh, The Jungle Book, amongst many others, Kim, loads of other uh, really famous big books. Moustache. Um, but I'll, you know, we've got little claims to fame as well, and as you can see, we've got a big concert in the church coming up soon. Sean, show them. All right. George Collins rode out one morning in May when May was all in. Right, we've arrived at the church. Okay, St Margaret's. Um, so this is where the family were christened, married and buried for hundreds of bloody years. Um, it's amazing. I think the oldest parts of it are Norman, possibly there might be some Saxon. I think there's a thing inside that tells us that. So getting on for 900,000 years old, that kind of age. But we'll take you down and show you Copper's Corner. George Collins cried she for your life it won't last you long. St Margaret's, that's the Lich Gate we just walked in, really super cool. Lovely old Flint Church. So we're going to take you up and round to the right here, we're going to walk you down to Copper's Corner. Let's, uh, let's walk, let's do it. Ten 
ten past four, nearly time for a pint. Must be getting on that. Your car is road home. There's a few burials just in this corner of the graveyard, and there's a neat story about it in um, Gramps Bob's uh, first book. Is it his first book? See the song for every season, or it's early to rise. I'm not sure actually, but we'll show you some we'll show you some dead coppers. <laughs> Whoa! Come down, oh mother. Oh mother, he cried, come down and shake up my bed. Come down, oh sister, oh sister, he cried, get a napkin to tie round my head. If I should chance to die this night, as I suppose I shall You can bury me under that white marble stone There we go. So there's, at the top there's uh, Joycey, straight after Joyce, who was a superstar. We remember her incredibly well. a very well. small little lady. She, she was, but she packed hell of a punch for a, for, a, for a small woman. Underneath is James, our great granddad, and his wife Daisy. Um, and at the bottom is Marion, Joan, Grandma, and Bob, Gramps, or, or Grandpa. Hello, Gramps. And certainly Joyce and obviously Grandma and, and Bob we, we remember incredibly well. Um, Bob's you know, one of the reasons are we're, while we're exploring a, a bit of family history and the traditions and everybody's traditions and what they mean is largely thanks to that man and his kind of passion for traditional ways of life and traditional ways of doing things. So here we are, we're by Rossendine Pond and you can see the plough which is a, a pub in Rossendine, one of the pubs in Rossendine. Where we will be very shortly yes. taking of some uh, much needed refreshment. But we've started really sort of reinvestigating what, what it means to us to be brought up in a long legacy. We've got a set of songs that we've handed down in the family for at least seven generations, so to the end of the 18th century, probably a lot longer than that. What we're aiming to do is we're going to try and explore what traditions mean to us. We've grown up in one, it's, you know, in the kind of thing we do in folk singing in the UK, we're fairly well known for that. But we'd like to sort of expand that out and think about traditions in other people's families and other parts of the, you know, other parts of the UK and further afield, wherever. Looking at that combination of people and place and time and how those things, those ingredients mix together and how they work. By looking at our own tradition, thinking how that might relate to other people and their traditions and, and using that to discuss, is tradition important? Well, it's important to us, we've grown up with it. And, and it's a kind of touchstone, a kind of thread, a golden thread that's run all the way through our lives and has done for lots of generations. And it, are there other people who've had that same experience? And if you don't have that, is there something missing in your life? Are we really lucky or does it matter? You know, have we got something that's not really important? feels important to us and when we sing to other people, we sometimes get an amazing reaction. And so there's some kind of magic there. And we're, that's what we're going to go looking for. We're also going to go to some pubs as well. Okay, right, this is the important stuff. Um, traditions, we are all about traditions, and this for us is, is about as good as it gets. Tradition in liquid form. Um, Harvey's is our local brewery. There's loads of them now, but when we were younger, the only place that was brewing uh, decent beer and has been doing for, God, I can't remember, 200, 250 years. Harvey's in Lewis, it's about sort of eight to 10 miles away from where we are, just slightly inland. And this is proper English beer. Um, this is bitter. This is the way it's supposed to be done. Um, this is mother's milk to us. We were weaned on this. The day we stopped, stopped suckling, we started supping on this. Um, full of vitamins, full of minerals. You don't need, this is liquid dinner. It's incredible stuff. And people, uh, people, you know, when we were younger, people used to take the mickey out of English beer. We lived in France, both Sean and I, for a while. English beer, flat and warm. It's not flat, it's not warm. It's cool, it's refreshing. Uh, it puts hairs on your chest. Uh, this is liquid gold. It's incredible stuff. And it's nice, the plough, again, we've been coming here since we were lads. Um, it's nice to be at a pint of this in the local beer and we've, we've done something a bit sneaky. I'm not sure we're supposed to be doing this, but what we've done is we've snuck out the back of the pub and we've sat right by the pond because um, it's a bit nicer. There's a big air conditioning unit in there. Lovely old pub, but you know, a bit nicer out here. Dragonflies, ducks. It is you that makes my friends my foes. It's you that makes me wear old clothes. 
But since you come so near my nose, it's up you comes and down you goes. Oh, good ale, you are my darling. You are my joy, both night and morning. And this is the start of the channel for us, Deep Rooted. So if you like what we're doing, what we're talking about, um, please subscribe, push the bell button for notifications as well. We'll put links up as well if we can, if we can work out how to do it to uh, some of the songs you've recorded. Don't forget to visit the, the copperfamily.com as well, which is the family website. Don't forget to press like if you've liked what we've done, and we'll see you next time on Deep Rooted. Both night and morning.